Hey guys, how's it going? Kevin Cleary here with a knife video for you. Today we are looking at the Civivi Button Lock Elementum in shred carbon fiber and blackwash 9CR Damascus. Really, really fancy version of this particular knife, although not crazy expensive. And let me start with that by way of sort of introduction. I've said this before, I'm going to say it again. I tend to like the the fancy versions of Civivis or maybe Cancept knives or or you know even CJRB in some some cases because you know I can I can have these flashy nicer materials uh, on a knife where one I'm not paying a huge amount of extra you know if you try to buy a custom knife and you try to really dress it up you know you add thousands of dollars to the price and then you have a knife that you don't want to use because you know you're thinking my goodness, if I scratch the finish on this Damascus or if I, you know, do something that, that leaves marks on the carbon fiber, you know, I, I've, I've taken a $5,000 knife and turned it into a $2,000 knife, you know. So um, I, I think the fancy stuff, to me anyway, makes more sense on something a little more budget friendly so that if I do do something stupid and mess it up, I'm not out all that much. All right. And I still get to enjoy a cool looking knife and people, you know, I, I've had a lot of people take a look at this and everyone does kind of admire the Damascus and, and they, they like the shred carbon fiber. In fact, many people haven't even heard of shred carbon fiber. Like what is that? And they want to look at it. And, and so it, it gives you a lot of that, that, Fun that comes from something a little bit different and a little bit dressed up, but without the the added cost or stress that that the, that would sometimes be associated with it on a higher end knife. Um, so let's get into the rest of the discussion here. Of course, the initial Elementum was a nice knife and it was wildly popular for Civivi. They were constantly sold out. They still sometimes are. Um, this one is a little bit bigger, which to me is a big, big upgrade. The, the previous version of the Elementum was okay, but it just didn't have enough room in my hand. Like I always felt like I was cramped when I was using it. So while I loved the design and I could tolerate it, uh, even to the point of calling it, you know, a good knife for people who are used to that, um, for me, I just wasn't interested in making the, the sacrifice on size. And so this larger version is right up my alley. So I have to say, um, you know, this, this is what made this knife more appealing to me. They took a nice design, one that I, you know, already did enjoy and acknowledge as a nice looking knife, but now made it a size that was more appropriate for me. The other thing I really have to say right off the hop here is I applaud Civivi for doing something a little bit different. All right, they've got lots of great liner locks. They've got some back locks. They've got some cool stuff for sure, but... Uh, I'm I'm imagining that in the R&D phase of this knife, they looked at this and said, you know, could you make this work in, in, in some other ways? Could you have some other options? Probably so. But, you know, this is a knife, this is a, a an option that you don't see a lot out there. In fact, the closest thing that you get to this this out there is going to be the smock, the Spider Coast smock, or the the Para three, or I mean Para two or Para three um, conversion kits that you can get from. I'm trying to think of the company now. Anyway, there is a kit out there. There's a company out there that's doing sort of button lock ish uh, Para paramilitary twos and threes. Um, and and this actually works more similarly to those than to to an act to, to some other button lock. So we'll talk about that when we get to the action. So I really I like the innovation. I like the boldness. I'm not in love with the deployment method, um, but it's it's fine. All right. So uh, let now that all of that is out of the way, let's quickly touch on size on this. This is eight inches overall, three and seven sixteenths on the blade, so just a little under three and a half inches. Four and a half inches on the handle, so that's the closed length there. All right, and I think most people understand this is not a, a huge knife, uh, and 3.2 ounces, which is great. In terms of something you're going to carry around all the time, 3.2 ounces is completely acceptable. So size, weight is absolutely perfect for an EDC knife. I, I think that's one thing that they've done really, really well here. Uh, they've, they've really 
gotten a knife that it's not too big, it's not too small, it's got enough handle real estate, enough cutting edge, like all of that stuff I really, really enjoy. All right, the normal version of this, by the way, we're moving on now to the blade, is going to have a 14T28N blade with a stone wash finish, or I guess it's almost a bead blasted finish, and I wish they were satin, but that's okay. Uh, this one, of course, is Damascus, which, and, and one of the reasons that I kind of ended up with this particular one is because... Um, the stone wash didn't really excite me or, or even it looks almost like a bead blast. It didn't really excite me. I like the blade steel offering there, but I, I don't know. Uh, I feel like blades, blades should just be a little bit shiny. I just prefer that. Um, mine, of course, is the 9CR Damascus uh, with the black wash. Um, and I do wish, by the way, that there was a, a satin version. In fact, this exact knife with a satin blade would be phenomenal, uh, as would the micarta versions with, uh, with just a, a satin blade would be pretty awesome as well. Uh, the only way you can get a satin blade on this is if you buy the fixed blade, the, the sort of bush crafting version of the fixed blade has uh, 10 CR 15 steel, and that is a satin finish. So... Um, in terms of blade performance, this is really good, all right? Uh, you've got this fairly aggressive hollow grind here. And 9CR, I mean, in this specific case, we've got 9CR uh, Damascus, which is quite good. End retention is is decent, okay? And, of course, on the 14C28, just not, wow, on the 14C28N version, again, you're going to have pretty darn good performance. When you go to cut stuff with this, it bites in really, really well. Um, like there's almost no pressure that I'm putting behind that cut. And so that's, that's highly enjoyable to me. Um, you know, do, uh, I know some of you would prefer, you know, a thicker, heavier, um, grind here but for me for an edc knife i definitely think a hollow grind is the way to go and even frankly for most other uses i prefer a hollow grind as well you know maybe if you want the best of both worlds the large hollow grind that crk does on the uh, chris reeve knives does on the Encosi is you know just that the perfect you know middle ground there Anyway, uh, you know, hollow grinds do perform exceptionally well. And, uh, you know, most people will agree, and there's lots of good testing out there to demonstrate that they're going to cut better, which is really, really what a knife is supposed to do. So let's talk now about the action. There's a couple things that I want to point out here. First of all, there's no, like, extra way. And if you try to pull this knife out, it just is not going to happen. So you do have to release the knife, open it up, and then it relocks. So this is like an always locked knife. It's locked closed. It's locked open. All right. It is on bearings. It does drop shut quite nicely and you can sort of let it drop and then get it open that way. Um, but it's, it can be a little bit awkward, especially right now when I'm trying to reach around a, um, when I'm trying to reach around a tripod, it's even worse, <laughs> but it, it's not the most intuitive and, and probably not my favorite deployment method. All right. Um, you know, just to kind of compare, right. What's so wrong about that? This is, just as as enjoyable perhaps a little more enjoyable this is the Civivi brazen of course um <clears throat> so while i don't hate the button lock mechanism i i don't also don't think it's like the greatest thing that's ever happened to the knife world however i do want to get into this just a little bit more and show you how this works so on this side of the knife so the sort of the what we normally think of as the um the lock side of the knife all right, even though the button is on the show side, there is a small spring, like a liner lock type spring pushing over here. And that's what pushes the button into place and what pops that, um, you can see, there, you can see the portion at the bottom of the button that's holding that blade open and watch as I push, see how I move it out of the way. That allows the blade to move. Okay, there's a track cut into that blade to accommodate that button being where it is. So it's actually functioning very, very similarly to a compression lock, right? The, the liner is pushing the bottom portion of, that, portion of that button over into the way to keep the blade from being able to close or being able to open in, that, in, 
in the case that the blade is closed. All right, that is a really neat mechanism. And I have to say, whatever else you're going to say about it, uh, I, I, that's well thought out and it's pretty interesting and, and not unexpected. You know, think of, think of some of the things that we has done. A good example is the integrals from we knives are just brilliant. I love the way that they do their integrals. Uh, it allows them to build an action, right? To, to build a lockup and, and deployment system without any compromises while still getting a, a great looking integral. And so, um, you know, I, I'm not surprised that they've done something a little bit different and frankly, kind of cool with the button lock. All right. Now that said, the only issue is, you know, and a number of people have said this, it would be nice to see some kind of deployment method other than I've got to push the lock and sort of manipulate myself to, to my hand to get this out. Um, the problem is, okay, this particular option doesn't allow, like if you put a flipper on here, it doesn't matter. The blade is locked closed. It cannot open. All right. So you'd have to redesign this whole lock in order to add some other mechanism, right? And if you did a thumb stud, the problem again there is, okay, so the blade is closed. So I'd have to, I guess, put this finger up here. I don't know. Um, so really this is either, if you're going to open it one handed, you've kind of got to fool around with, with it. Um, if you're going to open it two handed, that's pretty straightforward. You can just release the blade and open it. All right. Which, which is kind of cool. Um, and, and the other thing that I have to say about this is it does allow you to kind of get your fingers out of the way and not run any risk of, of injuring yourself. So, uh, give credit where credit is due. Well, I, well, I don't, well, I, well, I'm not just wildly in love with this particular locking mechanism. It is pretty innovative and, um, it doesn't, you know, those who are saying, I wish this had a flipper, or I wish it had a thumb stud or something that's, those are not really possible, uh, as this is currently engineered. All right, so you'd have to do something different. Also, this is on bearings, so it's it's pretty smooth, it's pretty fast uh, because of those bearings. So in terms of the action, you know, I don't know, I'd give it like an eight out of ten. You know, it's enjoyable, but it's not ideal. Um, let's move on and go ahead and talk about this handle. the The standard ones, of course, are going to be micarta. This one is shred carbon fiber with stainless steel liners and looks to be a G10 backspacer, but it could also be um, carried on with the carbon fiber. I'd have to, you know, yeah, anyway. Um, so it doesn't really matter. Um, I believe on the micarta versions, you'll see that the backspacer is micarta. So uh, the construction here is just fine. I'm pretty happy with it. Um, dual position clip there. It's a deep carry, you know, bent over clip with flush screws as it should be. The ergonomics are nice on this. Now the carbon fiber is a little smoother with the micarta. You're going to get a little more grip, which is enjoyable and, and needed by some people. You can choke up here and, and sort of treat this area as a choil. Um, it's, I don't know that it's necessarily designed to be one, but it's nice to have that option. I definitely appreciate it. So in terms of feel in hand and performance, yeah, this is good as an EDC knife. It's, it's, yeah, it's, they've done a nice job. I don't have any complaints about the, the ergonomics. There's no hot spots. There's nothing uncomfortable. All right. Is it, you know, just to bring in uh, another example, uh, the, the Kaiser Slicer with the 3D Contour G10 is is extremely comfortable. It's not it's not on this level, but it's it's as good as as most any folding knife that's out there. All right, uh, having covered all of that stuff and you've kind of got my thoughts on all of that, let's go ahead and bring in a couple of comparisons. All right. Not all of these are perfectly comparable. So I want to bring in the two that I find most similar first. That would be the CJRB Feldspar and the Civivi Brazen. And that's because both of these are slightly on the smallish side. Like they're right around that eight inch mark without going way, way over it. They're lightweight. They're, they're really good, well suited to EDC type of tasks. Um, these are going to be a little bit cheaper, but not way, way cheaper. Okay. Of course, this one costs a little more because it's the, the dressy version. All right. So, um, 
would I, do I have, you know, do I like one of these way, way better than the others? Not particularly. Like, as I think as, as you look at, at these knives, the, you've got to give some credit. The Elementum is a, a compelling design. The Feldspar is also a compelling design. The Brazen, these two are maybe a little plain Jane compared to the Elementum. But, uh, you know, for a good EDC knife, you kind of want that plain Jane type of look. Some other knives that I would compare... Uh, one would be the Kaiser that I just showed you. Uh, it's in uh, VG10, which makes the steel a little more comparable. Uh, obviously, the Rat Model 1. This one's D2, so not as comparable. And then uh, another great option, although a little heavier duty, is going to be the Real Steel um, H6. Different steel, 14C28, and, and a little heavier build. It's, it's, you know, this is built more like a Rat Model 1. So it's, it's going to be a little bigger, a little heavier, a little more hand-filling, and perhaps a little more confidence-inspiring as well. So maybe this would be more geared toward hard use. This would be more uh, EDC-style stuff. So um, those are some comparisons for you. Similar price point, similar-ish construction, similar purpose. Uh, so those all might be something you'd want to take a look at. Conclusion, you know, a lot of people like this design, and I get it. It is a nice-looking knife. It's a new, innovative locking style, which I am pretty intrigued by, and, and which I think Civivi has done a good job with, so I have no real complaints. Uh, it's a good folding knife. It's useful. It's attractive. Uh, is it, you know, would I pick this over every other knife that I've shown you on the table? Probably not. Um, you know, I like some of the others as much or more, but I, I also can't take anything away from this. All right. So that's where I land on it. Um, I, I, in terms of, you know, any striking major problem or, or total shortfall here. No, I think generally speaking, they've done a pretty nice job. And if you like this design and if you like this locking mechanism, you're going to enjoy this knife an awful lot. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We will talk to you soon.